Are you interested in astrophotography but don't know which style of imaging you would prefer to start with? In this video, I'll provide a broad overview over the two different styles of imaging and the differences between them. Hi there, my name is Dalen, and on this channel we go over all things astrophotography starting from the very beginner level and working our way up. Let's get into the video. Now before we get started, I do want to provide a quick disclaimer. This is a general overview. Now I won't go too in depth with the styles of equipment used. We'll go over that in other videos. Okay, let's start off with the first one and it's generally the easiest and the one that most beginners start with and that is nightscape or Milky Way photography. Now this style usually has something in the foreground like a tree or a building, but usually the Milky Way is the focus. Now starting with Milky Way or nightscape photography, it is the easiest to start with because all you really need is a camera and a tripod. Now as you upgrade your lenses and want to go a little bit deeper, you can go with a star tracker, but we'll go over that in another video. A good pro here is that it is less time consuming to set this up. Like I said, all you need are a couple things and it really can only take five minutes to get it set up. However, with a star tracker, it might take a little bit longer, but not too much longer, maybe an extra five minutes. But going with wide field and nightscape photography, um, it really only takes a few minutes to set up. All right, a great thing here with uh, starting off with this style is that it is the cheapest, usually. Um, you can find a decent sturdy tripod for around 50 bucks on Amazon. And if you look around for used cameras, you can save yourself a couple, a couple hundred dollars there as well. And you can start off for 350 to $450. Very reasonable to start with. Just keep in mind that looking at used gear is the way to go. Make sure, however, that it is certified. So that way you're not getting something that comes to you broken accidentally. A big downside with starting with this is that the lenses capture a lot of light very quickly. And that means that any light pollution from city lights will be captured in the shot. So what you're gonna wanna do is get away from the city. Depending on where you live, it might take an hour or two to get out far enough, but as long as you're away from city lights uh, and can see the Milky Way with the naked eye, you should be able to get a pretty decent shot. Moving on to the other style of imaging, that is deep sky object imaging. Now this is where you image pretty much everything that is farther out from the moon because I am including the planets in this one. Generally with deep sky imaging, this is where people start to ditch lenses and move to telescopes. Now this isn't always the case. You can image quite a few things like say the California Nebula or Andromeda with a 135 millimeter lens. However, if you want to get more detail, then you'll want to go bigger with a bigger telescope or a bigger lens. Uh, depending on how you want to take things, but this is generally where people switch to telescopes. A downside here to deep sky imaging is that it is less portable. Now, these setups can range from being very portable all the way up to being permanent, but because this is a beginner series, if it needs to be bolted down, we're ignoring it. We don't want to worry about anything that needs to be uh, permanent. Just keep in mind that some setups, while portable, are also heavy. The HEQ5 behind me here weighs 60 pounds, so that's just to give you an idea, just in case you can't move that much weight, or if you're completely fine with it, that's okay too. Another downside to deep sky imaging is that it takes a lot longer to set things up. Now, if you're using a camera, tripod, and star tracker, that's more than likely the, the shortest amount of time you're gonna take setting something up. However, once you move into more setups more like this, it can start getting up to 20, 30, 40, even an hour long, depending on the accessories you're using, uh, the software you're using to control everything, if you're using guiding systems, things of that nature. But it does take a little bit longer to set up. Now talking about the cost for deep sky imaging, the setups are on the more expensive end. So if you look around for used gear, you can start off at $500 with a decent used setup that is more than just a star tracker. However, it can range for the beginner level up to about $2,500. Going beyond that, you start getting into the intermediate and expert and professional levels. But we're sticking with the beginner stuff for this video. So the range to get a good setup to start with can go from about $500 used, depending on the seller, all the way up to about $2,500 new. One great thing here with deep sky imaging is that you can do it from the city. You just need to use filters. Don't try to do shots unfiltered because all of the light from street lights and ad lights and 
uh, stadium lighting, well, you know, whatever's around you will come through, but if you use some filters, it'll help block everything out. Now, I wouldn't recommend going out and doing wide field with filters because of the same things that it blocks out. It also takes out some of the detail in the Milky Way. So for deep sky, yes, use a filter, but for wide field, I wouldn't use one. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and let me know down in the comments what style of imaging interests you to start off with. If you really enjoyed this video, consider hitting that subscribe button and then hit that little notification bell so that way YouTube does tell you when I upload the next video. I want to thank you for watching. Clear skies.